Hey everyone, and welcome to another deep dive. Um, today, we're going to be taking a look at the allegations against Sean Diddy Combs, and we've got excerpts here from three different articles. And phew, this is this is some serious stuff. Yeah, it yeah. really it really is. You know, Diddy's known for his music, fashion, those legendary white parties, but these lawsuits they paint a very different picture. Yeah, uh, they really do. And and it's not just like one or two accusations here, you know. We're talking over 19 lawsuits have been filed against Combs, alleging some really serious misconduct, and, and there could be even more to come. Yeah, that's right. Just the sheer volume of accusations, I think, is definitely worth noting. And, you know, it really makes you question the narrative surrounding it. Okay, so for those who maybe aren't familiar, can you give us a little bit of background on these white parties? They seem to be kind of at the center of a lot of these allegations. Absolutely. Um, you know, picture this, like extravagant all-white affairs, attracting A-list celebrities, musicians, aspiring artists, all kind of like vying for a chance to connect with Diddy. These parties were legendary, a showcase of his lavish lifestyle. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like sought after invite, for sure. Exactly. And that's what makes these allegations even more disturbing. You know, it, it wasn't just about the parties themselves, but the potential power dynamics at play especially within the music industry. Right, like this whole kind of like access and opportunity thing can be a dangerous game. It can be, yeah. And several lawsuits, including one from his former employee, Adria English, alleged that this access came at a steep price. Okay, so let's talk about Adria English's case. What exactly is she alleging? So English worked multiple white parties and claims that Combs pressured her into having sex with another guest, Jacob Arabo. You might know him as Jacob the Jeweler. Okay. She also alleges that she was told to dress a certain way at these parties, almost like a signal to indicate she was available for sexual encounters. Wow. Um, that's a far cry from, like, the glamorous image usually associated with these events. Like, it's it's kind of unsettling to think that this was maybe happening behind the scenes. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, English's account isn't unique. Um, you know, we see similar allegations in other lawsuits, like... Uh, the one from this anonymous John Doe who claims he was abused by Combs at the 1998 White Party when he was only 16. 16. 16. Wow. You know, I think that this raises some questions about, like, the role of these parties in the music industry as a whole. Hmm. You know, were they seen as as more than just social events? And and how might that have contributed to a culture of silence around any any potential misconduct? Yeah, that's a that's a really, really crucial point. I mean, just imagine being a young, aspiring artist, eager to make it in the industry, and you get invited to one of Diddy's parties. Hmm. Like, how much pressure might there be to stay silent even if you witness something disturbing? Yeah, that's that's a lot of pressure, especially when you're talking about somebody as, as powerful as Diddy. Mm. Exactly. And that brings us to the allegations surrounding what some of these lawsuits are calling freak-offs. Freak-offs. I'm, I'm not familiar with that term. What does that even mean? Yeah, so freak-offs is a term that's been used to describe alleged group sexual encounters that supposedly took place at some of these parties. Now, it's important to note that, that the term itself can be, you know, reductive and, and even disrespectful to, to some, but I think it, it highlights the gravity of the accusations, you know? Hmm. We're talking about potential coercion, manipulation, a complete disregard for consent. Yeah, that's that's really disturbing, and it seems like these freak-offs are a part of, of several lawsuits against Combs, right? Yes, several lawsuits, including John Doe's, reference these alleged gatherings. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and Doe's account is, is especially heartbreaking. He, he describes meeting Combs, you know, even posing for a picture together. But then things took a dark turn. Combs allegedly made Doe show him his body, calling it a rite of passage, and even promising that his people would be in touch. Oh my gosh, that's just, that's chilling. To think that someone might exploit a young person's dreams like that, it just makes you sick. It really does. And unfortunately, the allegations don't stop there. Several of these lawsuits, including English's and Doe's, describe a pattern of, of alleged drug-facilitated sexual assault at these parties. Wait, drug-facilitated? What exactly does that mean in this context? So when we talk about drug-facilitated, are we talking about specific substances being used? Yeah, several lawsuits allege the use of drugs like Rohypnol or GHB often slipped into drinks. Um, they even claim that baby oil laced with these drugs was used. Baby oil, that's that's horrifying. It's a it's a deeply disturbing detail and and it speaks to a level of like premeditation and planning that's just it's appalling. Absolutely. And and we're seeing these allegations play out in court right now, right? Yes, Combs was arrested back in September on multiple charges, including racketeering conspiracy, essentially that he was running an illegal enterprise, sex trafficking, and transportation for prostitution. He's currently being held without bail. 
Wow, no bail. That's, that's significant. It is. Prosecutors argued against it, citing concerns about potential witness tampering, which is which is even more concerning given some of the, the details in these lawsuits. OK, so let's let's talk about those details. You you mentioned Don Richard earlier. So what's her connection to all of this? Right. Don Richard, a former member of Diddy's group Diddy Dirty Money, filed a lawsuit that's that's pretty damning. Um, she claims to have witnessed Combs physically assaulting his then girlfriend, Cassandra Ventura. Mm -hmm. in front of other prominent figures in, in the music industry. That's awful. Did, did anyone try to, to intervene? According to Richard, she and another member of the group, Kalina Harper, tried to help Ventura. But Combs allegedly threatened them. Wow. So so not only potential abuse, but also an attempt to to silence those who, who try to intervene. Exactly. And this, this pattern of alleged intimidation mm -hmm. seems to extend beyond like physical threats. Yeah. Richard's lawsuit also alleges unfair labor practices, claiming she and Harper were forced to work, <laughs> like grueling hours without proper compensation. It's like we're seeing like a pattern of abuse of power on multiple levels here, from financial to physical to emotional. That's a that's a really insightful observation. And it's it's crucial to remember that these accusations aren't just limited to to Combs himself. Several other individuals connected to him are, are named in these lawsuits as well. Right. We we briefly touched on Jacob Arabo earlier. Who are some of the other like key figures? Well, there's Roddy Jones Jr., a music producer known as Lil Rod. He filed a lawsuit that that reads like something out of a movie. Mm -hmm. He alleges that Combs essentially like passed him off to Cuba Gooding Jr. on a yacht. Cuba Gooding Jr., as in as in the actor. The very same. Jones's lawsuit describes being subjected to unwanted touching and, and groping by by Gooding Jr. Oh my gosh, this is just this is a lot to unpack. It really is, and it it gets even more complicated because Jones's lawsuit also names Diddy's own son, Justin Dior Combs, as a defendant. Wow. Okay. What what are the allegations against Justin Dior Combs? Jones accuses Justin of soliciting sex workers and and underage girls, and as if that wasn't enough. Jones also alleges that both Diddy and his son were the only other people present when a friend of his was shot at a recording studio. So he's implying that that one of them might have might have fired the gun. That's that's the implication, yes. And and while we need to be careful about jumping to conclusions, it it adds another layer of of seriousness to an already disturbing set of accusations. Absolutely. This is this is far more than just a, a celebrity scandal. These are deeply troubling allegations with with potentially life altering consequences for for everyone involved. You're right. And, and it makes you wonder, you know, with with so many accusations, with so many alleged incidents, why is this all coming to light now? What what took so long? That's that's the million dollar question, isn't it? And, and it takes us back to something we were discussing earlier, like like the culture of fear. You're, you're exactly right. Imagine the pressure to stay silent, especially in the industry where your livelihood, your entire career can hinge on the whims of someone like Diddy. It takes a tremendous amount of courage to to come forward with accusations like these, especially against someone someone as, as powerful as as Diddy. Absolutely, and it's it's essential to remember that that while these are allegations and and Combs maintains his innocence, the the sheer volume and and consistency of the accounts are are difficult to ignore. Right, we can't just dismiss these stories as as attempts to to cash in on his fame or yeah. or tear him down. You know, these are these are serious accusations with with real people behind them. Exactly, and and regardless of the outcome of these these specific lawsuits, I think they've they've sparked a much needed conversation about power dynamics in in the music industry and and beyond. So true. Yeah. And it, it seems like like a pattern we've we've seen before. Right. Like powerful figures, often men uh, surrounded by by enablers who who protect them and a, and a culture of silence that that prevents victims from coming forward. You, you hit the nail on the head. And, and that's why it's so important to not only listen to these accusations, but to to create an environment where people feel safe coming forward without without fear of retribution or or having their careers destroyed. Absolutely. We we need a cultural shift where where power and influence don't don't equate to a free pass for bad behavior. I, I couldn't agree more. This this isn't just about one artist or, or one industry. It's about a a system that that too often protects abusers and silences victims. You mentioned earlier that Combs is is awaiting trial. What's what's the latest on that front? So his trial is is set to begin on May 5th of next year.
It's important to note that, that Combs and his, his legal team have vehemently denied all of these allegations. Um, they've, they've called the lawsuits baseless and, and accused the plaintiffs of, of seeking financial gain. They've also pointed out what they claim are inconsistencies in some of the accounts. So it, it sounds like it's, it's going to be a, a, a long and, and complex legal battle. It, it certainly seems that way. And, and regardless of the, the legal outcome, these, these accusations have undoubtedly tarnished Combs' image and legacy. It's it's a reminder that that public perception and reality don't don't always align. You know, we we often create these larger than life personas around around celebrities, but but behind the the fame and fortune, they're they're just people. That's that's such a vital point. You know, we we can appreciate someone's someone's talent or enjoy their music without without excusing or, or overlooking potentially harmful behavior. Well said. So so what can we what can we take away from all of this? It, it feels like we've we've gone way beyond the typical, you know, celebrity gossip here. It it is much bigger than that. Mm-hmm. I, I think this this deep dive has has exposed some some uncomfortable truths about about power exploitation and the the systems that that perpetuate them. It's it's a stark reminder that, that we must believe and and support those who come forward with these kinds of allegations no matter how how powerful the accused may be. Yeah, you know, as we were as we were going through these articles, I kept thinking about those who who haven't come forward. You know, the the fear, the potential consequences. It's it's a it's a heavy burden to carry. You're right, and and for for those who have experienced any form of abuse or or exploitation, please know that that you are not alone. There are there are resources available, people who who will listen and and support you. If if this deep dive has raised any concerns or or triggered any difficult emotions, please don't hesitate to reach out for help. And and for all of us, let's let's use this as a moment to to reflect on how we can be better allies, mm-hmm. how we can how we can challenge systems of abuse and how we can how we can contribute to a culture where everyone feels safe, respected and empowered to to speak their truth. That's that's a powerful message to to end on. To our listeners, thank you for taking this deep dive with us. Remember, these these conversations are vital and, and they shouldn't end here. Continue to listen, learn, and, and challenge the status quo. 